Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Manisha. So in this video, we are going to see a CAN approach implementation uh, that is Kolmogoro or Nord theorem. Uh, I explained this in my previous video. If you haven't checked that, please uh, click on I button. You will find the link of the uh, video. So let's see. Uh, so the first thing that you need to do is to open Colab and just click on new notebook and it will open uh, the new prompt where you will you can you know write your code as i already prepared the notebook to explain the thing so i don't need to create the new one so i'm just going to close this one few things about this project is that this code focuses on on can method for hard disease classification this link here provides research paper data set and python library needed for this analysis here we are going to solve classification problem the primary goal of this project is to classify heart disease using can method heart disease can can lead a cause of death worldwide and early detection of heart disease by classification model can significantly improve patient outcomes by using can approach we aim to build a robust model uh, that can predict the presence or absence of heart disease based on patient data for those who are interested in theoretical foundation and detailed methodology of CAN approach, you can see the paper here. Uh, this paper is available online and I also provided the link here. You can just refer this. The data set used for this project is accessed from Kaggle and this data set contains uh, patient attributes or features. To implement CAN method in Python, we use iModel SX library which uses scikit-learn function uh, so i'm going to open the link this library we are going to use so within the library the specific module uh, here this module we are going to use so the agenda here is uh, is first we will install the necessary libraries then we will read the data which is a disease history data and uh, then we will train can classifier model with a default parameter value for heart disease uh, classification then we will uh, check uh, the result of the model uh, using some performance metrics and then uh, we will try to improve the model performance uh, by tuning some important parameters uh, and then we will see if uh, the model the giving a good performance with the tune parameter or not finally we will just plot the rock plot just to see how model effectively uh, work so first thing is to install the library uh, which is i model sx so i'm going to install this library it will take some time so we are done with the installation now it's time to import the necessary libraries here I'm going to run this cell. This actually imports all necessary Python libraries for data manipulation like pandas, visualization, then machine learning, modeling and evaluation. So libraries like panda and numpy handles data structures and computation and matplotlib and c1 are used for plotting the for plotting and scikit-learn uh, actually provides a tool for data processing, model fitting and performance evaluation. Now we are going to upload the data sets. This data file which is in CSV format is already there in data folder. We are going to read the CSV file and you see the CSV file is there in data frame format uh, and uh, the target is 0 and 1 is like a heart disease or without heart disease. And here the next step is that you can also visualize the plots the distribution of each feature you can see it here so the next step is data preprocessing it actually prepares the data set for modeling uh, it uh, separates uh, features x and the target variable y and applies the scaling to features using standard scalar function which normalize the data to uh, to have a, a mean of zero and standard deviation uh, as a one so it's time to split the data into train and test this cell actually splits the uh, the scale feature and target variable into training and testing set here 30 percent of uh, the data is used for testing the model uh, I also pass stratify is equal to y which means the uh, the train and test uh, sets have a, approximately the same percentage of sample 
of each class. So after uh, splitting the data set, we are just going to print um, the data sets um, X train, Y train, X test, Y test. Now it's time to train the classifier. This function initializes can classifier with specific um, settings. So it trains on a training data x train and y train and uh, evaluates the model performance using this accuracy score then classification report we are going to print cohen kappa score as well as confusion matrix to have some insight about true positive and false positive true negative and false negative values so i am going to run this cell and this is the uh, result of the uh, basic model but this model is with these default parameters and the values. So with this basic uh, settings, we have uh, accuracy of the on test set. Um, the model gives accuracy on test set is 75%. And this is the classification reports where we can see the important thing is F scores for class 1 and class 2. It's more or less similar 70 one uh, percent and uh, Cohen Kappa value is 50 percent and here we have confusion matrix we have a true positive and true negative um, but there are some missing misclassification as well so let's see if we tune some parameters of can can we get a good result here I'm going to you know tune um, hidden layer size then regularize activation uh, regularize entropy and regularize reach. I'm going to pass uh, some values and then uh, just I'm passing those uh, values into can classifier function. Here I'm using device is equal to CUDA and uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to feed this model on the data X train and Y train. Then we are going to use the, the train model to predict the X test data which is unseen by the model. Then I'm going to print hit all these parameters, hyperparameters. Then we will see the, in each run, we will see the accuracy score, then kappa values, then classification report we, we are going to print. And then we will see the confusion matrix for each iteration. So here idea is to see list of hyperparameter values and we will pick the best model which has high accuracy score. Based on that, we will pick the model. Let's run this. It will take some time. Here we have a result. These are the parameters that we tuned and accuracy. In first iteration, we see 61% accuracy and, and this is the classification report. Then confusion matrix, we will see the best accuracy. So there is a highest accuracy that we notice is a 76%. Now 0 0.5, 0 0.7 values. And I'm also going to add a spline order with a three and five values. And the rest of the code is the same. I'm just going to run this while running the model. So hidden layers, uh, it's a list of sizes for hidden layers in neural networks. So these values actually represent the number of neurons in hidden layer. And then activation. So regularization uh, activation parameters is for uh, activation functions to, to prevent overfitting. So entropy, uh, it is a regularization parameter to control the complexity of the model. Reach is another regularization parameter. Then there is a spline order. Okay, so here our objective is to check the best model with the highest accuracy on test set and then take the set of hyperparameters of the best model and train the model using the set of hyperparameters of the best model. So from this result, I just picked the best hyperparameter set and I passed it to this model can classifier and here it's hidden layer that I passed is 128 regularize reactivation is 0.5 regularize entropy is 0.5 regularize reach is equal to 0.1 and spline order i passed 5 this is based on the result that i have from the previous model then i'm going to feed this model on x train and y train where batch size is equal to 64 learning rate is equal to 0.07 and weight decay is um, 0.01 so when we say batch size it actually uh, means that the data will be divided into batches of 64 samples each and during each iteration of the training process only 64 samples are loaded and processed learning rate is another hyperparameter 
and this hyperparameter actually it's a regularization parameter used to prevent the model from overfitting this one then we will use this model to predict the data points on extrain data then we are going to print the hyperparameters that we passed to can classifier uh, we are going to print the accuracy score of the model then coin kappa score then classification re report and then confusion matrix uh, to see misclassification i'm going to run this cell and now we have results here so 85 percent around 85 percent accuracy that we got on test set and uh, this is the coin kappa value 60 nine percent f1 score per class is around 64 and this is the confusion matrix that we have if 27 and 28 data points are misclassified so i think this score is much better than the the model with the default parameter values and that's why hyper parameter tuning is important to improve the model performance now i'm just going to create a rock curve using this code and here you see the percentage is 92 so it shows the model's probability estimate for the test data set so that's all for this video i hope the the code is useful to understand the can approach the development of can method is is, is in the initial phase i just tried to implement using this uh, model so just check this out and then go and review the code and please let me know your suggestions in comment box so that i can improve the, the my code as well and uh, that's all for this video in the next video probably i'm going to compare the can approach with the nlp and we'll check the performance of both the methods uh, on the same data set i i, I suppose uh, that's it so thanks for watching the video I hope you like this video. Please subscribe to the channel. Leave your question in comment box for me. Uh, I will also give the link of the uh, GitHub repository for the notebook that uh, we, we saw in this uh, video. And uh, take care and see you in the next video.